This video was sponsored by Enhance, Elbil Mac, a better wood planner, Camp Power, and Bill Componente. Yo, what's up? Today we're going to do a range test of this Tesla Model Y Performance Uniper. And what is new here is that there is now a new battery from LG that is slightly bigger than before. We we'll also test the consumption. Unfortunately, it's raining a lot today. So you're not going to get the stellar low consumption that you usually would expect. But I mean, it's still going to be quite good, right? Yeah. Okay. So yesterday we installed the commander, which is the communication unit for the sexy button. We actually didn't use any sexy button. I'm just uh, getting the commander to see some stats here. So it's installed in here somewhere. And I, oh, oh yeah, look at this. Huh? You like that? You see, this is the app for the sexy button and it can show you lots of useful information. A remaining capacity is reported as 82.3 kilowatt hour, but this is not the energy down to zero. If you go here, you see that well, it jumps a bit up and down. So supposedly when it was new, it was 84, but there was probably some initial degradation from the factory, you know, weren't quite common with lithium batteries. But here, energy buffer, that's below zero. So if you take 82.2 minus 3.7, you get 78.9. Now you say 78.5 kilowatt hour. It's supposed to be 79 from according to spec. But yeah, let's see then. Usually I get around one kilowatt hour less than that, so 77.5 is what we might get right after some discharging losses. Okay, so the car is ready, good to go. Look at this, they fixed it. Now it is black there. And this is ultra high uh, D, uh, UHD, what was it? Uh, it is really high resolution, the new screen. Okay, and then see here. Tesla Bjorn is back, oh yeah. Let's kick ass for the Lord. Well, we're on the move, and as usual, we have the auto lane change here. Oh, nice. Yeah. And also I'm using the, the well, the, this uh, sexy app, and, uh, okay. It shows you many cool features, like uh, blinking, and also if I regen and the brake light comes on, you know. There's also some uh, stuff in the blind spot uh, visible. So there's a very useful app. Well, and here, look. Alien technology. We can see the weather data there, huh? It's raining over there. Wow, I've never seen any car visualize the weather like this. Other cars, there might be some uh, icons with some clouds and suns and stuff uh, on scattered places. Okay, let's check the weight. Front axle. 1060. No, wait, 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 wait. 1040, okay. The whole car. 2140, oh, there. So it gained 40 kilograms somewhere. Hmm. Well, I guess that's pretty good. Well, we're now doing the 90 test and show you that 92 on speed though here is 90 GPS speed. Tesla shows very accurate uh, speed. And then we started from Ionti Tangan. We're gonna go to Rudzhag then back again and then measure the consumption. But uh, it's unfortunately gonna be on wet road, so uh, it should be. Well, depending on how wet it is, maybe five to ten percent higher consumption. I'm using the standard acceleration mode. Insane. I'm not sure if it uh, keeps the battery at higher temperature or not. Uh, but uh, chill, yeah. Then I feel like it's too slow with the chill. It mimics many of the legacy automakers. Uh, prefer this. And then uh, region, we have reduced in standard. And then also ride and handling is standard, not sport. So this should be good. And then we can see here that the battery temperature is at 29 degrees. No, no, that's inlet. Yeah, well, actually, battery is at 29 degrees Celsius. Oh, and the seats here, they are great. They give you that side support without being too narrow bucket seat. So it fits my big fat ass perfectly. And also, ride is great. Now I have it in the standard. If I switch to sport now, feel like it firms up slightly but it's still comfy you know I feel like even in sport mode now it's it's softer or more comfortable than the, the old pre uh, uniper 
especially the, the old old from 2019 those were way too harsh well, I'll probably just use standard unless I go on the track then I use sport and then soundproofing is also I mean, okay yeah it's nice you know it's not over loud so it seems like overall you get a pretty good package and I, I like the white seats here it just feels nice and, and gr airy and spacious in here many cars I test nowadays just black 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 everything black interior black header all black you know once you go black you never go back <laughs> well we're gonna test coasting might not be the best uh, weather condition but okay let's see how it performs now I just have to wait until the power drops and then we see roughly there put the car in neutral there okay it feels like it doesn't roll that well because of the wet roads starting to pick up speed okay got to get past the truck not sure the wind I think we have not much wind here what I've seen earlier of course with the uh, wider tires here and sticky tires that also um, uh, ruins the consumption and also brings up the rolling resistance slightly but man you can still go down relatively fast huh impressive Tesla is all about efficiency look at this even on the wet roads yeah okay but then we need to see how far down can we get Trying to avoid the biggest patches of water now. Okay, let's try to roll. There's still a slight downhill, even though it's not that easy to spot here. It's still a, a little downhill. So if the car can just keep rolling, that'd be great. Oh, we start losing speed now. Can okay, we reach the, the noise wall over here? Yeah, yeah, we can. Yes, we can because this is a tie can. On to the right now, we have the Tesla service center in Brimendar. Oh, still rolling, 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 rolling. Okay, here, here. Well, okay, there, that's it. Here, okay. See, well, put the car in drive again. Oh, oh, okay. Well, it was, it was good for a wet run, I'd say. We just turn around at the route and uh, now you see the consumption is. Wow, 156.4 watt hour per kilometer, despite that it is. Wait, no, 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 freaking. Oh man, the freaking phantom braking all over the place. You know, this stretch of road here was finished, uh, this motorway stretch was finished around five, six years ago, and they still haven't fixed this. You know, it, it's depending way too much on the map rather than vision that, uh, well, it is a nice autobahn here no need to slow down uh, okay but you see it's quite wet outside and despite the wetness the consumption is staggering low for a performance car wow tesla for the win all right the consumption was 162.5 watt hour per kilometer very impressive okay now we do the high speed test yes 123 there 120 gps speed the strange thing is that now uh, auto lane change is not available and I don't know when Tesla implemented this or downgraded the software but you cannot double click for autopilot it will always just single click for autopilot so now I have to choose whether I want it to be adaptive cruise control in the menu here um, or auto steer so that's silly because for since they the, since the start of time you will be able to be in autopilot and as you twist the wheel you get out of autopilot and it switches to adaptive cruise control and then you just double click or tap it here right in the old cars to go back to autopilot now if we do this then it goes out of everything right man uh they need to fix this it ruins the experience or it, it downgrades the experience all right this time 217.3 watt hour per kilometer 
And also I mentioned that this car overports by 1%. So when you think you've driven 100 km, the car displays 101 km. That means that this is 1% higher, but still pretty good for a performance car. Wow, nice red brake calipers. Right now we drive an extra loop to get the battery down. So I'm going to go to uh, Rema 1000 where there's a supercharger there. And we also measure the battery capacity. It seems like it is around uh, 78 something kilowatt hour. And then I manually preheat the battery here via uh, the sexy button app. Or uh, I don't know what to call this, enhance app. Very useful. You just press this button here to start or stop the preheating. Otherwise you could of course navigate to a fast charger. But sometimes uh, it's more convenient to do the manual preheating. Let's do the moose test. Ah, ah! Okay, it passed. All right, we have the supercharger down to 6% and then 8.4 kilowatt hour remaining, but minus the 3.7 kilowatt hour buffer plus what we spend here, 72.6. That becomes 77.3 kilowatt hour. So not quite the 79, right? Uh, well, it could be because uh, there are some hammer losses. We're doing mostly 120 kilometers per hour, except for the 90 test. So, yeah, maybe if this was a Sunday drive, we could actually get around 78, 78.5 kilowatt hour. But now let's do the charging test then. Okay, let me see. Bring out the big screen. Boom! 235 or 250. Oh, yeah! But then the question is, how long do we get it? We can actually see 250. Uh, with some of the other LG batteries, it's not really 250, it's just 220-ish. But here, it seems like we can maintain 250 for a little while. Okay, and then here we see... Oh, this is weird, that's two... Oh, this is the one that matters to total power. Wait, actually, one of this is what goes into the battery. Uh, and this is what we receive, and then the rest is actually heating. No, no, it's cooling, yeah. Battery inlet is cooling. Hmm, interesting. Dude, look at this. Even at 16%, we're still taking 250 kilowatt. This battery is charging way faster than before. It's like the bigger 100 kilowatt hour battery, kind of. Wow, it's game over now. Wait, 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 oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, nothing to see, nothing to see. Dude, what the heck, man? At 24%, we're down to only 160 kilowatts. Wait, uh, this screen claims 160. Huh? Wait. Uh, I think the other battery, the old battery was charging faster. This is quite embarrassing how slow it is. Uh, is it because the battery is overheating? We have 59 uh, degrees, but I preheated to almost 50 degrees, but then the cooling kicked in and... Yeah, you can hear that it's, it's cooling, but it's not cooling at the maximum power. And this is a performance car. It should have excellent cooling. And it, it is Tesla, alien tech after all, you know? Octavalve. Uh, well, at least let's hope that this charging curve is flat all the way to 80%, right? Okay, since this was a wet run today, I don't know exactly how much it would consume if it was dry versus the previous generation Model Y performance, but uh, based on my butt feeling, it should be good. I mean, the, the, the low speed test, uh, which should probably be around 150 watt hour per kilometer, and then the high speed test may be around 200. So, yeah, okay, I mean, we have fatter tires, it's, it's better performance here, but actually the rear motor, for Tesla's uh, own claims, it's more efficient and also more powerful than before. So maybe there is actually some gain there at least. But yeah, so overall though, because we have bigger battery now, we actually get pretty good range. And I think this might be the most efficient car in this class, considering it's a performance worse, not just a regular long range or even rear-wheel drive, but you know, those are of course more efficient, but then not so fast, right? Yeah, so overall, pretty good package. I understand why it sells so well throughout the, the world. And also, especially Norway is just the number one. It's just passing all the other cars now. Like a 10-year-old Leaf record has been shattered. And e-Golf also is just bam, you know. 
plenty of space, but also now we have good comfort and good performance if you also want that. And the CDC or you know, the adjustable dampers there. Mwah! Yes. All right, that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.